Good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be doing this second session. So I'm Suho. Uh, I think I have already been introduced. So um, here we are going to look at uh, the streaming analytics patterns for your digital enterprise. So when we do business and with the um, digital transformation, when we work with a lot of customers, we found out without real-time analytics and without streaming analytics, there is, there is, you won't get a competitive edge. So if you want to get a competitive edge in the marketplace, you should act on real-time. You should get data from, on real-time, analyze that, and act immediately. So the faster your response time to anything, it can be a customer issue, or it can be some incident, or it can be uh, an opportunity. The faster we react, the better profitable we can be. So along that side, streaming analytics becomes the most important aspect when it comes to the analytics. So because of that, we are focusing more on uh, streaming. And that is why that we have now, um, we are moving, we are converting this product called Data Analytics Server into a stream processor, where we will have out of the box support for all type of streaming capabilities. And it doesn't mean that you can only do short term processing, you can also do long term processing with that. But we are going to process them in a streaming manner. As and when the data comes in, we are going to process it and we are going to we try to give the most meaningful information as much as possible. So that is the basic idea behind that. So in this case, we will introduce you to the streaming analytics about WSO2 analytics offering and wh what does this new stream processor does. Streaming analytics patterns, so there are about eight patterns, I'll go through them. Uh, and managing that pattern, so just having patterns is, is not good, like if I have already used something, how can I change it, manage that, and deployment of these different patterns. So uh, what is streaming analytics? So if you take a, guard, a forester, so this is a software that provides analytical operations to orchestrate data flow and calculate analytics and detect patterns. So these are the things that you're going to do with that. And if you want to build a system that can sense, think, and act in real time, and this streaming analytics platform or streaming analytics will be able to help you to do all of this stuff, but not just from one data sources, from multiple data sources. So we will be able to collect data from multiple data sources, they may be from rest, uh, resting data source or real time data source. We can collect everything, process that, and give insights immediately. So the, the WS Social Analytics offering is going to have the streaming uh, stream processor. So its core, the core will basically contain uh, the complex event processing and um, incremental time series aggregation and machine learning capability. So they will be the core. And we have an extension store which has lots of extensions, like when it, when, if you want to process geofencing, or if you want to have uh, um, uh, natural language processing, all of those are uh, provided through extensions. And then this particular platform is going to read and respond to events. The event comes from various systems, like JMS, APIs, or anything, uh, Kafka, MQTT. So all of those can produce events, so we consume them, and we try to analyze and produce results. So results also goes out as events. And this has uh, monitoring capabilities, and we also have an anonymic fabric on top of it, which provides the scalability and high availability for, the, for your platform. And on top of this, we are also building solutions the, uh, specific for certain domains. So for example, financial and banking is one, real time, uh, so retail, Location analytics, operational analytics, smart energy are some out of the box solutions we are building. So these are with, the, with our experience with the customers, we have gained some knowledge and we are collaborating with them to build these kind of solutions. And you can also build your own one with the uh, core product and the capabilities it gives. Like it gives you a rule management capability, it gives you a dashboard capability. So these are things that we have learned. Like there were, some of them were there in data analytics server as well. So we have, we have got that and we have get some, got some customer feedback on that and we have in, uh, evolved those capabilities to be much more user friendly and usable. 
So with WSO2 stream processor, so it's a, a lightweight, lean, uh, cloud-native product. So it's having a easy to learn as streaming SQL, uh, and it will have native support for uh, streaming machine learning. Oops, and high performance uh, processing with just two nodes. So we we are the only one who provides a highly available system with just two nodes. Otherwise, all the other vendors have you have to have at least five nodes deployed to get something like a real production thing going on. So like if you if you are, if you are installing Kafka, the Kafka needs two nodes, and then you have to have a Zookeeper with three nodes. So at least that will become five nodes. So anything else that you want to do, it, it comes somewhere around that. So we try to minimize the infrastructure cost. So with the microservices and things like that, we want to make it small and run fast. So you can't make a stream processor as a microservice because it has state and a lot of other things involved into it. So we try to make it smaller as possible. So we are trying to achieve that through this particular capability. And if you want to scale even more, like beyond the capabilities of what it can do with two nodes, we can still explore that, expand it with Kafka, with multiple nodes, and we can still process in a highly scalable way, which exactly wants processing as well. And we are also building tools uh, for development, monitoring, and business for business users to manipulate the rules that was already done or to create new rules. So it is all just one app. So we, you will be creating a Siddhi app. That has the that knows like what are the streams it's going to consume, how it's going to process, and what are, what are the alerts it's going to send out. So it's just an app that you are going to write. So it's basically a script, and that script will contain streaming SQL, something like that. Uh, and I, in this particular process, well, we'll uh, I'll talk to you about different patterns like. That, that will basically help you to understand what a streaming uh, processing can do, understand the difference between what is stream processing and what is a database-based application. Sometimes I find some customers get confused with, okay, what a database-based application does and what a stream processing uh, can do, and what it can do and uh, which features you have to use when, and the best practices. So I will we'll go through uh, several streaming analytics patterns um, one by one, and on those, I'll be using this particular use case to explain. So we are going to have a hypothetical scenario of a sweet factory management. So we have a factory, and we have raw materials coming into that. We, uh, we create suites, and we deliver out. So it's a very simple use case, and we just want to monitor out the inputs and outputs, the rate of inputs, and trying to identify some alerts uh, on that. So monitor supply, production line, and sales, Optimize resource utilization, detect alerts and failures, um, provide, uh, so predict the demand, and manage and processing manage the processing rules on real time, and visualize real time results in dashboard. So these are some things that you might need to do if you are running some process. So we'll see how we can build this thing with the WSO2 stream processor and the five patterns. So the first most important patterns is data pre-processing. So as in when the data comes in, now it's more of an IoT world. You get data from multiple sources, and they have corrupted data, or some might have partial information, or some might be in different different formats. One it be in XML, JSON, or it can be comma-separated values, anything. So we should be first un consume those events and convert that into a common format that you can process them. We can filter the unwanted stuff. And if there are missing fields, we have to put defaults. And we also need to modify that so that we get more information out of that. So for example, in this Siddhi app that we are building, so we have to have a name and the definition. So we have a definition, something like an SQL definition. So define stream something. So this particular definition, what it basically says, OK, we, we define a table in SQL and we process that. But defining a stream is also something like that. But it is not a finite information. It is an infinite length of table with the data coming in real time. And it goes out as well. So if you process a query on that, it, process, it gives you the information based on what is there at that point. So just think like an SQL table that has infinite length. So on top of that table, we, know we need to get data from multiple places. So we have annotations to that. So we have a source annotation. I want to get data from MQTT. And the type is JSON. So I can basically say, 
okay, go ahead, and you can have other parameters like how to connect, and I'm not going to pollute this slide with that. So we can have multiple connectors like MQTT, HTTP, um, TCP, uh, Kafka, and so on. And they can also consume events from different data formats like JSON, XML, text binary, WSO2 event or key value pairs, CSVs. So these are some things that we will support out of the box. And then we write queries. So we can say, from this particular stream, I want to do some processing, and I want to produce another stream. So this is an output stream I'm producing. So here, I'm not doing anything. I'm just passing it through. But if I want to filter out something, I can just say, OK, if amount is less than 100, and the name is equals to candy, I just want to filter out the candies, like small stuff, and I just want to uh, forward them to, to the next processing. So if I want to calculate the cost of them, so then I can just say the amount and then do a small mathematical calculation to it. Or if I want to add a default value, the currency is in grid in pounds, so I can just add that and send it out. Or it can, you can also call functions. So the functions can be inbuilt functions or custom UDIs or even see the extension. So all of those can be called within this particular flow. So now you can see there's a particular flow. You consume from something, you do some processing, and you send it out. So with that, we will be able to do some data pre-processing so that the da this, whatever the data that you're consuming from sensors or from other application will become more meaningful for your app. The second pattern is basically how are you going to store and integrate that data with the data store. Sometimes you can just consume this and process it and send an alert. You can do that. But in most cases, for auditing purposes and other things, we need to store that data for further references or things like that. So we should be able to store that data, retrieve that data, and modify that. So for that, search, update, insert, uh, contains, and uh, delete operations are there. So here. We are going to define a table now. It is not a stream. It's a table that is static thing. The same way we define a stream, we can define a table. And then uh, this table is going to be an in-memory table. So the, all the data that comes in is going to live in memory. And if the server goes down and comes back, data is lost. So you can, if you want to have some caching, in, uh, internal caching kind of stuff, you can implement through this. But at, at the meantime, you can also add primary keys and indexes to improve the search of those cache. And if you want to back this by an actual database, then you can also say, OK, this is the store that is backing up this. So it can be a physical RDBMS, HBase, Cassandra, or Solar, anything. We can back up with this. So we can do some pre-processing and insert into that. And we can also, through the same API, we should be able to access that. So I'm just inserting into the table with some values. And then I, if I want to do, up, do an update or insert operation, I can write it here. So it will go and update and insert. So now you don't need to switch back into different type of programming languages to do this. You do the streaming analytics. And then if you want to write it to a database, you can write this. And now from your dashboard, if it is reading from the RDBMS table, it can simply read from that. or or Solar Cloud, if you are just querying a query, you can still use that particular system. You don't need to come here. But these are, and th this is how we basically write the data back into the store. And we should be also able to read them back to do further processing. So I'll come into that in a while. So uh, streaming um, data has to be summarized. So summarization is the, the mostly used function when it comes to data analytics. Like, uh, uh, for example, if you, we want to find uh, uh, sum, count, min, max, and all of those, and we sh it should be like last five minutes, last 20 minutes, like for short periods. So if we want to do it for shorter periods to create alerts, then instead of filtering, we can just say, I want a window of one minute. So in this infinite length of stream, I just want to uh, logically separate that to last one minute. And I want, I'm going to do this sum operation on, the, on that with this grouping condition. And I'm going to produce the result. So sum of um, amount, I'm grouping them by the name. So for each name, there will be an uh, event generated to the last minute production stream. And this can also be done for a longer period of time. So I want to do it for every, 
every second, every minute, every hour, and every year, like something like that. So this will help you to build, come up with different graphs. Like people always want to see like, well, okay, I, my histograms of hourly, minutely, all of those things. So if you want to build something like that, we have out of the box support here. So you don't need to insert this data into a database and run a batch processing no, or job and see the results after some time. So it's not like that. Now we can do that all in real time as and when the data comes in, we do the aggregation, we insert into the uh, table as well. So this is a persistent information, but updated well in real time. So here, the same thing, the same logic. Now we say we define that same logic as an as a aggregation so that it automatically happens. So now this aggregation is happening continuously so that you don't need to change that uh, each and every time. And then we can also query these tables with the previous table that we inserted or the aggregation. We can simply query that saying, OK, I want to select these fields from the aggregation on this condition within this particular period. So you can select a period there the user is interested. And you can also say the, the uh, uh, the period, like whether you want to be, whether it's a day or minute, the, uh, the granularity of the query. So you can also give that so that you can produce nice visualizations for your business users. So that will basically help you to create different graphs. So we also have a dashboard feature that comes with the product where you let, it let you do um, uh, um, uh, graphical representation of that. And that product is also going to have dashboard level, widget level, and data level um, uh, security, so that fine-grained permissions are, are provided, and localization support, inter-widget communication, and those links, uh, like shareable dashboard feature, is also available. So we can share this dashboard with a particular state with anyone. So the fourth pattern is KPI and alerts. So just getting data, doing pre-processing and storing, okay, that's fine. And now we have to also do alerts. Like if, if, if some KPI level is met or not met, then we should be able to send alerts. So for that, we can use filters or if and then conditions, like we have those kind of things in, I am not going into details. Or we can also use having clauses and we can basically identify whether we have met the KPI or not, and then we can send alerts. So here, we have this last minute stream, and we are doing a small filtering out there, and we are producing the output here. And that particular stream is defined as low production alert stream, and that has been sending an email uh, to a manager uh, as in the, in the name, so we are saying the low production of this particular name at this particular factory. So it's a templated uh, information that basically filled by the event, and it goes as an email. So you can, this is a simple uh, textual representation, so it can be an XML, JSON, anything. Or if you are not defining uh, a payload, it will use its standard format and send a particular XML message, which is def the default format. Otherwise, you can al always go and define it. So these kind of alerts can also be pushed. Like, it, we, can, we can call a service. We can do a TCPA, um, um, Kafka, RabbitMQ connectors. So we have connectors to everything. So you can basically define like this and push different type of events out, like how we can consume events from different places. So the other thing is correlation. The correlation is the most important thing uh, when it comes to stream processing. So for example, we should be able to identify complex patterns, like, OK, the, this event happened after some time, another event happened. Or this event happened, and that after some time, uh, another event should have happened, but unfortunately, it didn't happen, so I want an alert. So occurrence of an event pattern or non-occurrence of an event pattern is very, very important. And identifying trends, okay, whether it's continuously increasing or there is a triple bottom, uh, or I'd want to identify certain different patterns and alert them. So this is not easy to implement, like if you are a programmer, if you want to write this in a conventional program like Java or Python, it will be very hard for you to write it. So those kind of constructs are provided through the stream processing and specifically on the complex processing, complex event processing side. So they will basically help you to achieve this task. So here, okay. So here we have, um, oops, 
okay so we are here we have i don't know why so here we have two streams one is uh, raw material stream so we have the name of the raw material and the amount of the raw material and then we have a production input stream so whenever a raw material comes into the system we have to consume that and start the production immediately so we have the name and the amounts the same thing so for from every e1 which is a, an event from a raw material stream uh, and followed by so after some time uh, if i did not find the production input stream for the same raw material and for the same amount for 15 minutes so that means the particular raw material that came in was not processed within 15 minutes then i need an alert okay so this is a non occurrence of an event so if so whenever an, uh, a raw material come we should start the production in 15 minutes and if you are not doing it we want an alert and if we want then we can just simply say i would don't need this not then it will say okay if it happened within 15 minutes i want an alert so you can have a not or not and we can basically decide on that so this will help you to do alerts and identify different things that's happening in your organization so that you can build applications that are adaptive so they know the situation and they can react immediately or they can prompt something in the users um, uh, screen or it can even send an email or page alert or whatever things so there when you can be close to your customers and understand so you can tell something back to the customers immediately so that they, they can take decisions much faster so the same thing like if you want to identify pattern sequences like things happening continuously so we can also do partitions so that the same kind of queries is partitioned for different type of suites and we can identify whether the production is continuously decreasing for 10 uh, cons cons consecutive minutes like here we can see here is a star and then we have another query like basically this is a this is kind of a regular expression written on streams so i will doing i will be doing using the same example for the hands on session that is happening tomorrow so we will be using these examples and we will we'll try to demonstrate how they work so if you are interested in this uh, feel free to come that so i can we can go into much details of those so here there is a last uh, time uh, last minute production stream so every times if there's uh, the production amount is every minute production amount is pushed through that so the last minute production is there and then there's an immediate next event uh, where the timestamp is less than the previous one uh, and the amount is also less and likewise if it happens for 10 times i want an alert so for 10 consecutive uh, um, events it has continuously decreased so i want an alert why it's happening so i can just look into it and do something about it okay so these are things that we can write so if you know okay if it if it decreases 10 times i want an alert or if it if this thing happen i want an alert so all of those can be written by you but there are some cases where you can't write so it's that is that is like the car term, like driving car example so you will be using machine learning to basically train the model and use that so we have support for both uh, static model and streaming machine learning models so we support pmml tensorflow uh, and spark machine learning capabilities to do static models and we are also uh, researching a lot and implementing many uh, in memory algorithms for clustering classification regressions markov models anomaly detection all of those are done for streaming machine learning so you don't need to spend time on uh, implement like collecting data training a model and then using it you can uh, the system will itself will uh, learn and try to predict so if you already have a pmml model you can store it somewhere and then give the uh, model uh, path so it will you can just load that and use it so we are also optimizing this so that when you change the model you can dynamically update that so we will still be able to take the latest version of that and run it and apart from that if you want the system to learn by itself we can use our streaming machine learning capability so in this case we are using a hoifeding tree classification so it's a classification model that's a streaming uh, machine learning that we were using here so we can have for for certain kind of streams uh, if, you, if you take time series streams um, the result of the prediction you can get after some time immediately like for example if you predict tomorrow is tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a rainy day 
then tomorrow you can basically know whether that prediction was correct or wrong. So you, basically, you can learn from the same stream itself. On those cases, the delayed information can basically be used as a feedback to learn. So you know the prediction, and you know actually what happened, and by that, you can continuously learn the system. So you don't need, we don't need to collect all the information and create a model and then use it. We can use the same streams as much as possible. So on those cases, the same stream with the results can be applied to the training model and also for the uh, actual model. So we can do learn the training as and when we go. So we are building machine learning models, uh, algorithms like that. So if we are trying to minimize the cost of uh, building machine learning models for the um, customers because everyone likes to use machine learning, but apparently no one is actually using that. So we want to encourage them using more and more. So we are trying to make it as simple as possible so that we can start somewhere and, and, and make it uh, can get good use out of that. So just having this, so this is very technical, right? So you have queries and writing. Uh, business users might not really like this. So when it goes to the business users, we found out, okay, they want to enable alerts, to disable alerts. So they want to do some level of functionalities on top of this. So for simple queries like that, we have a form that you, he can, they can fill. Okay, I, if this thing happened, I want an email, if and else kind of things. So those things, we are providing it out of the box. But when it comes to a very complex logics, we can't create forms for that. It's very, very complex. So what we have done is we have created templates. Okay, so you, as a developer, you can go and implement that. And you can put, okay, whether it's five minutes or 20 minutes, I want to, like, there are some uh, variable parameters the business user want to tweak that. So you can put uh, placeholders there, and they will appear in a form. You can fill that. So this is a sample app that we are building on top of it, but you can integrate your own systems. So the, your manager can go and enable an alert, disable an alert, and change that so that these streaming stuff will get effect immediately. So you don't need to go, to, go through a complete life cycles to change some value on a system. And uh, apparently, this screen is not uh, showing those stuff. So we have um, a, a developer studio that has auto-completion, debugging, uh, simulation, everything together. So it's very easy for development. And uh, this is the editor that we are basically doing for that. And when it comes to deployment, so we are uh, fine-tuning this two-node deployment for best performance that we can get out of it. So we try to give zero downtime, uh, zero event losses, and we also have the multi-data center support. So we are the only one who is having multi-data center high availability with streaming pro stream processing. Uh, we recently did with this with a healthcare customer, so they want each event to be delivered uh, they must deliver, otherwise the patient is going to die. So they implemented that particular system with the uh, WSO2's um, uh, uh, complex event processor. So we introduced this particular feature for them, and now we are basically using that into the latest. In, we are introducing that customized feature as a proper one, and we are introducing that with uh, uh, stream processor. So with two node high availability, that can also be deployed on a multi-data center deployment, so we can guarantee all the messages are always delivered. And uh, apart from that, we also uh, we are lacking. We were lacking on the distributed capability uh, scenario in the past. We tried to do it on top of Storm. It didn't really work out. So we are now moving towards working with Kafka. We have done a lot of tests and uh, stuff on that. Uh, it was working pretty well. So we have uh, a system. It's something like that. So we see the apps can consume events. And you can just write a CD app, and it will automatically identify different components, and they will distribute themselves. So you don't need to do anything. You can just write the same application that can run on two-node HA, or it can run on a distributed mode. If you want to tweak that, you can add annotations and say, OK, I want this query to be run on five nodes. I want this to be run on two nodes. Like You can tweak that for performance reasons, but it can do that automatically. So that's what we have done. And there is this particular job manager where you submit the job to that and it will distribute to the whole cluster and manage it. So we also have a highly available job manager and uh, the cluster. So this is quite a number of nodes if you really want high scalability, but most of the customers will not need this. But we are also 
this is for a highly scaled environment. So this has a um, nice, apparently you can't see anything here, <laughs> a nice uh, um, mo uh, monitoring tool. So you can monitor the cluster, monitor the, up to each level, like how many events each SIDDI app used, and within the SIDDI app, uh, the different uh, components, how much the memory consumption, how much event consumption to that level of monitoring. So you can actually fine tune the system. So, uh, so stream processor can basically give you any, everything that you need when it comes to stream processing related uh, technologies. It can manage data streams. It's a powerful streaming uh, SQL language. It has dashboard and many other features. And we are the only one who provides like two node HA uh, with um, um, 1,000K events per second, so which, can, which you can achieve with the less latency. And um, um, we can also do multi data center support with those capabilities. So on summary, we looked at what stream processing is, the patterns of streaming analytics, like what are the things that can be done, and how you can implement that using WSO2 stream processor, and the business benefits of using you know, the manageable business rules, and how you can deploy, and, um, and how the multi-node multi deployment is done. So that's all from me. So, uh, any questions? Uh, because I'm, yes? I just want to ask, uh, this is a separate product from uh, WSO Analytics or it's uh, replacing it? Uh, so, it is an evolution of WSO2 uh, data analytics. So, the, the, the real-time concepts that you were able to run on that can automatically run on this. Uh, what we were trying to do is we are trying to move the batch versions, we are trying to make them run on this as well. Because otherwise, the, the earlier deployment was much more complex, so we were trying to make it small. So it's an evolution of that particular product. So, when is it gonna... so we are expecting to release in Q1 next year, uh, we, because the alpha is already released, and we are now doing the final, uh, stay, uh, final level testing. But um, we are not going to. Um, so if you are already a data analytics uh, server customer, you can still go ahead and use that because if if you are if you are happy with that, we will continue. Con we are continuously improving that on on in terms of stability and uh, all the other kind of stuff. Um, but the innovation will mostly happen on this particular product. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. And. Sorry, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, two questions. The first one, I think, that is related to the previous question. Um, I saw a lot of components during this presentation. I think new dashboard, uh, the business rule, uh, and the, the CD studios. And uh, my question is, uh, if one or more components of this one are, st are uh, um, now available, or neither or one is available now, uh, because we are using currently, for example, the templates management of the yeah. data analytics, and I think it is still related more with the business rule or something yes, like this. Same thing, same thing, yeah. Okay. It's the same thing, but on the template manager, currently you can't let the business person to mm -hmm. write a rule, so this will also have that particular advantage. So you can template it, and they can also build their own rules, like simple filters, they can come up with their own logic and create it. Okay, uh, this kind of uh, uh, rules um, will be managed like the template which, uh, with an XML file or will be created a new uh, environment uh, or new tools for manage? Because in our experience, uh, we have uh, tested that uh, XML management, uh, management of the file is uh, uh, complex for uh, a developer. So we hope that uh, a new aid or new uh, tool will be provided to manage templates or uh, rule management. To, to create the template. Yes, to create a template. Okay. So I think it could be a good suggest. Yes, thank you for the feedback. I will will work on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Can you state the great today can manager for monitoring APIs? Beg your pardon? Can we? Integrate today can manager? Yes, so the new version of the API manager, which is the C5 version of that, uh, so that will be using this particular product for the API analytics. So, um, so the C5 versions, we are trying to be more cloud native and small, so that is one of the reasons that we are coming up with this. So, um, so it, it, it will have all the features for monitoring API.
think um, okay the last question yeah I think we are already on. So one question, um, the data analytics server has like Spark and also City Engine, and this looked different, for example, the receivers currently or the publishers in the data analytics server. I think the structure here is different. So does, uh, do you provide a way to migrate existing applications to the new version or need this to be rewritten? Yeah, so um, the Siddhi uh, language is going to be the same. So the, if you have, if you know that we had a concept called execution plans. So the execution plans can just you work as it is with small modifications uh, as, as the Siddhi app. The, the receivers and publishers are earlier an XML kind of uh, files. So we, we are basically using, bringing them as annotations here. So if you have an ex um, if you have receivers and publishers on the earlier domain, you might need to uh, add them as annotations, so it will basically work on the new one. So that is the task that we have to do. So that is not like you don't need to rethink of how you do it, but mostly do do some manual. Uh, if we, we are trying to build a tool, but I'm not exactly sure uh, about the, when the tool will be available. But you will be able to at least go through that ten add the annotations and get it done as, as fast as possible. When it comes to batch analytics, with the incremental processing capabilities we have, uh, we will be able to cater more to most of the batch analytics capabilities. But on, uh, so it, we have to take those case by case. So if you have a requirement, we can have a discussion and find out whether a particular batch analytics case can be uh, handled by a stream processor or we, whether we need an external Spark. And if we need an external Spark, then we can integrate to the external Spark and get that done. So we have found out like most more than 80% of the use case our customers are using can be done with just this. So um, so we were trying to reduce third-party dependencies. So like if so because even for simple use cases now they have all the customers have to develop deploy a lot of other things. So we were trying to reduce that part. Okay, uh, thank you, and I'll now uh, introduce you, Shiro. So she is a director of uh, director solution architect, uh, and she has worked with a lot of customers uh, and providing um, 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 solutions like how how we can integrate our product into different uh, different other systems. So she will be a good one to. Uh, um, talk about this open interoperability of WSO2 analytics platform and how it can work. So over to you, Shiro. Uh, 